you can get your education completely paid for starting on day one. I actually ended up turning down the offer to negotiate for higher pay. I make a base salary of around a little over a year ago, I released this video covering everything I could possibly think of within my internship at Boeing. Since that time, I've joined Boeing as a full-time engineer and I've learned a lot more about how the job world works. The video about the internship was really successful and I received a bunch of feedback from people within the company and people who wanna get in the company. So with that being said, today I'm gonna to walk you through my job as a full-time engineer at Boeing. And by the way, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn and reach out after the video is over. I'm going to start this off with a statistic that'll probably surprise you. On average, in the United States, 68% of interns get a full-time offer to come back to their job following an internship. While this may seem like a surprising number, I think it's even higher for Boeing, hovering somewhere around 80%. So what I try and tell people who ask is getting the internship is the hard part, and once you have the internship, then the hard part is over. I thought about it, and I believe I got the offer for four main reasons, and I think this can probably translate to 90% or more of other internships out there. I'm going to quickly go through these four reasons reasons, and then I'll tell you the timeline of how and when I got hired. So the first reason is the relationship you build with your manager. A lot of times, your manager's opinion on you determines your future with the company. You don't have to be the first person in the office and the last person to leave in order to impress your manager. At the end of the day, your manager wants someone who's hardworking, receptive, and shows them the proper respect. It really is that simple, and once you find out your manager's personality, then you'll find the right balance of those three. The second reason I think I got the offer is because I got along with my coworkers. You don't have to be everyone's best friend, but you'll find that team chemistry is usually pretty good, and nobody wants a thorn in their side or someone who's trying to shift the group culture in the wrong direction. If you're fairly personable, most teams are pretty easy to get along with. The third reason, and perhaps the most obvious, is because I think that I brought value to the company. At the end of the day, if you do your job and you're trying to make some sort of positive positive impact on the company, whatever that may mean for you, your company will be happy. Working hard and asking for work that others may not want to do or may not have time to do is a great example of this. The fourth one is that you make it evident that you want to stay with the company. This goes really far and most people probably don't think about doing this because it may not seem obvious. While talking with your manager, preferably in the second half of your internship, make it known that you want to return to the company. Whether that means you still have a couple years of college left or not, it doesn't matter. Because for all you know, your manager might be trying to figure out the same question about whether you want to return and that transparency just helps the communication flow better. So I got my full-time offer about a month after I left the internship. I was getting my master's degree so I pretty much knew at the beginning of the internship that there was no way I was going to be a full-time employee right away but I have one year of school left so my hopeful plan was to come back after a year. I had made it very obvious that I wanted to return and my manager liked me so we were in pretty decent communication for the month leading up to the offer. I got an email with an official PDF on it from Boeing so I pretty much knew right away that I had the full-time offer. I actually ended up turning down the offer to negotiate for higher pay, but we'll talk about that more later. I work as a facilities electrical engineer at Boeing's Philadelphia site. At the site, we make both the Chinook and the Osprey. However, I actually don't do anything with the aircraft. Because I'm a facilities electrical engineer, my job primarily consists of supporting projects that are improving the site. Because Boeing is a US defense contractor, I'm not allowed to talk about specific projects, but I'll be very broad so you can grasp the concept of what a facilities engineer does. Imagine Boeing wants to add another building that will manufacture a part for one of the aircraft. The building will get designed by an architectural firm that we contract out to, and and it'll get built by a construction contractor. But generally the firms don't know too much about the ins and outs of the site. They always have plenty of technical questions and pretty much hundreds of things go wrong per project. To help alleviate some of the issues, the people we contract to come to us facilities engineers. The job often requires creative thinking and I can say there's really not two days that are the same. Within electrical facilities engineering, a lot of the projects have to deal with power distribution or power savings. One of the best things about being a facilities engineer is you have access to pretty much everywhere on the site. So about 30% of my time as an engineer is spent out at various spots on the site. Probably the two greatest things about working for a company are one, the benefits, which I'll get to in a minute, and two, the resume boost that comes along with it. The greatest downfall of working for a big company is probably the fact that you're such a minuscule piece of the pie. It makes you feel like your opinion may not matter, and it's really hard to change things or do stuff different because there's so many systems in place. In my experience of working for both a smaller and larger company, generally with smaller companies, you'll find that the work environment is more laid back, and employees have the freedom to do what they feel is right versus what the company tells them is right. But I will say for Boeing in specific, it's very rewarding when you get to see one of the helicopters take off for a delivery. It gives you that sense of pride and a little morale boost that you might not get at other companies. 
Many of Boeing's jobs are hybrid and even some are remote. For me, however, I work in facilities, so I work full time in person. Of course, I would love to switch over to a three day in office, two day at home, but due to the nature of my job, it's probably not gonna happen. Outside of facilities, I find that a lot of engineering jobs are hybrid. If I had to guess and look at Boeing as a whole, maybe 60% of jobs are in person, 30% are hybrid, and 10% are remote. Now that's not an official statistic, and I don't know that for sure, but based on what I see, that's probably the most accurate I can come up with. So this all depends on your specific job. But if you're doing a design engineering job, for example, you may not need to travel at all. It honestly varies so much that I can't answer this question quantitatively. However, I will say that the company is pretty big on allowing and encouraging employees to move from site to site. Boeing, as you probably know, has facilities and offices in pretty much every state and also overseas, giving you plenty of opportunity. And they would rather you stay with the company than leave, so they'll encourage this intercompany movement. And chances are this will probably help you move up the ladder of management if that's something you're interested it in. Now let's get into some of the fun information. So to start off, I'll provide you with perhaps Boeing's best benefit, the 401k match. Boeing matches an industry leading and maybe even country leading 10% salary match of your 401k contributions. In a nutshell, your 401k is a retirement account that you typically don't pull any money out of till you're 60 and Boeing is offering to pay 10% of your salary into this. So if I was making 50,000 a year, then 10% of my salary would be 5,000. If I chose to put $5,000 of my own money into this account, Boeing would put $5,000 of their money into this account. And let me tell you, from experience, pretty much everybody at Boeing is making considerably more than $50,000 a year. It's basically a free 10% boost on your salary, so I would hope that everyone out there is taking advantage of it. Now, I'm sure that this next benefit is industry leading as well. Boeing has what's called the Learning Together program, basically a program where you can get your education completely paid for starting on day one. This doesn't mean they'll pay your student loan debt off. It's more geared toward getting additional education. Without having to pay a dime out of your own pocket, you can get any STEM degree from a list of like 500 colleges, and a lot of them are really good colleges. If you want to get an additional degree outside of STEM, like maybe an MBA for example, then Boeing offers what I think is around $25,000 a year, which for most programs will completely cover it anyway. It's pretty insane that they offer this and it's all pretty much free. There's several employees at Boeing I've met that have like three extra degrees and they say they've done it all without having to pay a single penny for it. And I probably would be taking advantage of this as well, but I already got my MBA and I don't want to give up on my free time at this point. Another benefit is the PTO. Starting as an engineer, I get a little over 20 days of PTO per year. This is over four weeks of paid vacation time per year. Not to mention we get a little over a week off every year around Christmas time. And as you're at the company longer, you get more and more PTO, maybe closer to high 20s when you've been there for a while. The health insurance I take advantage of and apparently it's really good and I don't really know enough about health insurance to be able to speak on it, so we're moving to the next section. There's a bunch of other benefits like a three month paid paternity and maternity leave, two year rotational programs around the country, discounts for major brands all over the world, student debt payment assistance. As you can see, there's plenty of benefits and even with those ones extra at the end, I only listed about a third of them because they sounded more interesting. I make a base salary of around $90,000 a year. Obviously, as you probably put together with bonus and benefits, it gets up into six figures easily. I was originally sent an offer for less, but I ended up denying it with the rationale that I already have my electrical engineering undergrad and a master's in business. Obviously, this is considerably higher than most companies would probably pay with another benefit of working at Boeing. In general, Boeing doesn't pay as much as some of the tech companies like the Microsofts, the Googles, and the Apples. They use comparable companies like Lockheed Martin, Airbus, Northrop Grumman, a few tech companies and kind of average and measure their salary ranges so they can be at the top of the competitive market. Boeing uses a scale of non-manager employees from one to six. Generally, a level one will be someone starting off with no previous experience whatsoever. This is reflected in their pay, of course, as they'll make the least amount of money. The levels work their way up to a six, which is maybe someone who's been working at the company for 20 years. Time at the company isn't the only qualification for becoming a level six, and you have to do a certain amount of things in Boeing's eyes to get that eventual promotion to a level six. Typically, from looking at the salary ranges, these employees will be making right around or a little over 200,000. Although I found that it's pretty hard to find somebody that's a level six. And as for managers, it's completely different, but I'm not gonna get into the scale for them. I think you already know my answer for this question and it's absolutely yes. Whether your plan is to stay for a year or 40 years, you can boost your resume, get some good benefits and be working for a company that makes a pretty big impact on the world. Which is why if you see an open position as a full-time job or an internship, you should probably apply.
I'll get to how the bonuses work in just a second, but I want to remind people that you can just reach out to me if you have any additional questions. Whether that means commenting on here or sending me a message on LinkedIn, I'll get back to you either way. After seeing the amount of people who reached out to me, both at work and on my personal accounts, thanking me for giving them all that information on the internships in my last video, it made me feel good to know that I helped. Because that's the reason I made the video in the first place. I was looking up something similar and found nothing, and I wanted to fill the gap. If you want to help me out in return, I'd appreciate it if you considered subscribing and following along for future job related videos. With all that being said, as a bonus, Boeing generally offers 3 to 5% of your salary on average, which quite obviously is a hard thing to turn down. And in terms of a salary increase per year, this one isn't as good. I've heard it's typically 2 to 3% of your salary, basically just fighting off inflation. Not the best increase, but of course, we're already in a fortunate position and it's way better than 0%. With that being said, that's going to do it for the video, and I'll see you next time.